Hello future MDs! In this video, we're going to study biology. So itong bio lecture review na to is divided into four parts. And punong-puno siya ng concepts. So I hope na makatulong to talaga sa review nyo. I'll just put the links to the other parts sa description below. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel. By the way, our lecturer here is Miss April Balesteros. She graduated Bachelor of Science in Biology in UP Baguio and currently an incoming third-year medical student at Cagayan State University College of Medicine. Super thankful ako sa kanya kasi pumayag siya na uh, i-record ko yung lecture niya and i-upload sa YouTube. I hope that this will also help you sa pagre-review niyo for Enma. That's all. Let's proceed. Ecology is the study of the relationship between living organisms and the environment we live in. So let's just define some things. We have biosphere. It is the entire portion of the earth that is inhabited by life. It is the sum of all the planet ecosystems. Biomes, it is the world's major communities classified according to the predominant vegetation and characterized by adaptations of organisms to that particular environment. Community, it is a group of populations living in the same area. Population, on the other hand, is a group of individuals in a particular geographic area that belong to the same species. Also have producers. They are primarily green plants that bring energy into the system by capturing sunlight. Consumers, these are organisms in an ecosystem that lives by eating other organisms. Food web, it is a complex interaction of feeding relationships. Chemical cycling, it is a nature's way of allowing life on Earth to limited resources by continually transferring the energy from one form to the next. So we have uh, structural components of the ecosystem. We have abiotic or the non-living. Example, we have the light, water, soil, atmosphere, atmosphere, temperature. Biotic component, it includes living. Example, we have the plants, animals, fungi, and bacteria. So yung classification of organisms, they are from kingdoms followed by phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Species, these are organisms that can reproduce fertile offspring with each other or with the same kind. Species richness, it is the number of species. Species evenness, it is the relative abundance of species. So we have uh, different types of biomes. Biomes, these are large naturally occurring community of flora and fauna occupying major habitat. So we have terrestrial, aquatic, and fresh water. So let's start with the terrestrial biomes. For the terrestrial, we have here tundra on the top of the triangle. So from the bottom, dito sa pinakababa, mainit siya. Yung temperature is pababa. Uh, there's a decreasing temperature as you go up the triangle. Dito tayo, nandito tayo sa tropical. Ito naman, Decreasing temperature kapag pataas and decreasing moisture naman habang in-approach niya yung right. Just remember this figure. So tundra or yung Arctic, extremely cold climate resulting to a frozen undersoil or what we call the permafrost with few plants and animals. Next, we have the taiga or under the subarctic. It is the largest, largest terrestrial biome having heavy snowfall, swampy coniferous forest of high northern latitudes. And we have temperate. Dito yung, it includes temperate forest, temperate grassland, and the desert. So desert, so very hot and dry with little rain. 
tropical, dito naman nabibilang yung rainforest, savanna, and desert as well. So, sa savanna or tropical grasslands, it is hot and dry, mainly grass, shrub, and some trees. So, there are two distinct seasons here. And dito tayo nabibilang uh, sa tropical. We have dry season and seasonal rain. Aquatic biomes are the ocean zones. So, just define some terms. We have here intertidal. It is the region that is covered at high tide but exposed at low tide. Intertidal. So, yun yung uh, nandun sa shore. Neritic zone. It is inshore, shallow, high, high light levels. Oceanic zone, offshore, high light levels, upper regions of water column. We also have pelagic. Pelagic zone, it contains both photic and aphotic regions. Abyssal naman, we also have abyssal. Depths or bed of the ocean between 4,000 and 6,000 meters down. There's a total darkness and never receives daylight. It is characterized by lack of nutrients. And uh, we also have the benthic zones. These are uh, the bottom substrate and they are often rich in dead tritus. Freshwater biomes, we have the littoral. Littoral zone are the inshore shallow highlight levels. Limnetic zone, offshore. Profundal zone, aphotic. And the benthic zone or the bottom substrate. Dito makikita natin na Yung mga terrestrial plants, nag-grow sila sa part ng littoral zone. Pero dun sa part ng limnetic zone, wala na tayong makikita ang terrestrial plants dito. Okay, so uh, let's now proceed with the different muscle types. So we have here three types of muscle, the skeletal, smooth, and chiropractic muscles. Skeletal muscle, its main features are the fibers are straighted, tubular, and multinucleated. They are voluntary and they are usually attached to the skeleton. Skeleton or tendon and bone aponeurosis, like a flat tendon. They are found at the periphery of the cell and on the muscle of the arms. Smooth muscle, the fibers are non straighted spindle-shaped, and uninucleated. They are involuntary and usually covering wall of internal organs. And this is smooth muscle. Their nucleus are found at the center. And nandun sa gitna yung nucleus nila. Ang location nila ay sa stomach and blood vessels. Cardiac muscle, they are straighted, branched, and uninucleated. They are also involuntary, and uh, it is the only covering walls of the heart. And ang prominent characteristic ng cardiac muscle ay the presence of intercalated disc. And ang um, uh, cell communication ng cardiac muscle natin is through gap junctions and desmosomes. So paano ba nagkakaroon ng muscle contraction? Muscle contraction is triggered when sodium flow inward following the opening of the sodium channels. So, ang mangyayari, since magkakaroon ng influx ng sodium sa loob ng cell, it will result in a wave of depolarization. Magkakaroon ng depolarization down the muscle cell that causes calcium ions in the sarcoplasmic reticulum to be released into the cytoplasm. So, mag-trigger siya ng shortening ng muscle or contraction of the muscle. Alright, so now let's proceed to the organ systems. So, let's start from the heart. This image it shows the anatomy of the heart. So, uh, we've mentioned that it consists of uh, uh, the cardiac muscle. So, involuntary siya. Okay, so the heart shows two separate pumps. We have the right heart that pumps uh, blood through the lungs, the left heart that pumps blood through the systemic circulation, 
that provides blood flow to the other organs and tissues of the body. So, ito yung tinatawag na pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. The heart consists of two atrium and two ventricles. Each atrium is a weak primer pump for the ventricle, helping to move blood into the ventricle. Papasok. So, basically, mas, uh, mas thicker yung muscles ng ventricles natin kasi mas sila yung nag-exert ng effort para mag-pump ng blood palabas ng heart because the ventricles supply the main pumping force that propels the blood either through the pulmonary circulation by the right ventricle or through the systemic circulation by the left ventricle. So, uh, cardiac arrhythmicity is defined as the continuous succession of heart contractions. Atong cardiac muscle, it is a syncytium. Ano bang ibig sabihin pag sinabi natin syncytium? They contain intercalated discs. Intercalated discs are actually uh, cell membranes that separate individual cardiac muscles from one another. That is, cardiac muscle fibers are made up of many individual cells connected in series and in parallel with one another. So I've mentioned earlier na yung communication ng cardiac muscle natin ay through gap junctions that allow rapid diffusion of ions and desmosomes. So uh, balikan natin yung syncytium. Kaya syncytium yung cardiac muscle natin kasi Cardiac muscle is a syncytium of many heart muscle. Syncytium ibig sabihin interconnecting nature of cardiac muscle. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng syncytium. So, uh, ano ba yung essence ng pagiging syncytium ng cardiac muscle? So, this is important para mas mabilis yung pag-fire ng action potential, para mas mabilis yung pag-spread ng action potential from uh, one cell to the other cells. So the heart actually is composed of two syncytiums, the atrial and the ventricular. So the atria are separated from the ventricles through the atrioventricular or the AV valvular openings between the atria and the ventricles. So, yun yung tinatawag na AV valves. So, yung AV valves natin or yung atrioventricular valves, these consist the tricuspid valve and the mitral, mitral valve. And ang um, uh, semilunar valves naman, uh, we have the aortic valve and the pulmonary artery valve. Yan. Yan naman yung pulmonary natin. Semilunar valves. Punta naman natin yung difference ng SA node or the sinoatrial node and the AV or the atrioventricular node. The uh, sinus or the SA node, uh, these are small, flattened, ellipsoid strip of specialized cardiac muscles about approximately 3 millimeters wide and are located in the superior posterior lateral wall of the right atrium. And then siya sa right atrium natin. And it is considered to be the pacemaker. Kumbaga, dun nag-uumpisa yung action potential. Uh, dun siya unang nag-generate. And then it will be passed to the AV node. Yung AV node naman, uh, it is where the impulses from the atria are delayed. Kumbaga, nagkakaroon kasi muna siya ng delay. Kapag na-receive niya yung action potential, nagkakaroon ng delay before passing into the ventricles para hindi nagkakaroon ng overflow dun sa ventricles. So the AV node is present in the posterior septal wall of the right atrium near the opening of the coronary sinus. Kung ang SA node ay pacemaker, ang AV node naman ay pace setter. So let's proceed with circulation. There's a question here. Di ko lang siya actually verbatim na maalala pero basta may mga may lumabas na ganitong type capillaries are most abundant in tissues and organs that are blank so metabolically active 
kasi ang function ng uh, capillaries natin, dun kasi nagkakaroon ng, or dun yung site ng exchange ng carbon dioxide and oxygen sa capillaries natin. So, ano ba ang examples ng uh, mga metabolically active na tissues? We have muscle tissue and the uh, kidneys. So, ang lining ng capillaries natin, they are lined by simple squamous epithelial tissue. So, uh, let's also define or differentiate veins from arteries. Veins, they bring the oxygenated blood back or toward the heart. Arteries, they bring oxygenated. Pag oxygenated, it appears red. Kapag the oxygenated dark blue. So arteries, it carries oxygenated blood away. Arteries A, away from the heart. But there's an exemption here because pulmonary artery, though it is an artery, it carries the oxygenated blood from the heart going to the lungs. Diba? I have shown in the figure earlier. While yung pulmonary veins naman natin, it carries blood with highest concentration of oxygen. So we also have renal veins. These are the veins that drain uh, the kidney. It connects the kidney to the inferior vena cava. Hepatic portal vein, blood vessels that conduct blood from gastrointestinal tract and spleen to the liver. Coronary arteries, it supply oxygenated blood to the heart muscle. Okay, so ito yung image ng pulmonary circuit and uh, systemic circuit. Lumabas din ito sa exam before, yung pathway ng systemic circuit. So let's try to trace uh, the flow for the systemic circulation. It starts from the left ventricle. Kasi oxygenated blood na siya, di ba? It will supply the, the body. Yan. So, uh, oxygenated blood na siya, it comes from the left ventricle going to the aorta and its branches. So, oxygenated siya. And then, pupunta siya sa capillary bed wherein nagkakaroon ng uh, exchange, gas exchange. And then, pupunta na siya sa vein, papasok sa right atrium. Papunta siyang right atrium. So, dito, ang blood natin, deoxygenated na siya. Ngayon, since deoxygenated siya, na siya, kailangan niya ulit ma-oxygenate. Pupunta naman siya ngayon sa lungs for oxygenation. So, ganun, from the right atrium going to the right ventricle, pupunta siya sa pulmonary arteries. So, pulmonary arteries carries the oxygenated blood going to the lungs. Sa capillaries, dun magkakaroon ng capillary exchange. And then, pupunta siyang, dadaan na siyang pulmonary veins, papasok sa left atrium. And then, papuntang left ventricle. So, ganun ulit. Kapag nandun na siya sa heart, ipapump naman siya going to the uh, systemic circuit. Uh, basta you familiarize yourself here kasi may tanong uh, na ganito before, yung tracing the pathway of systemic circulation. So, let's go back to capillary exchange. Paano nga ba nagkakaroon ng exchange ng gas dun sa capillary? Capillary exchange refers to the exchange of material from the blood tissues, and then to capillaries. So, ang net movement ng fluid natin ay from high pressure to capillary bed to an area of lower pressure in the tissues via filtration. So, merong uh, dalawang main factor na nag a sa capillary exchange. We have osmotic pressure and yung blood pressure. So, the blood pressure will tend to cause water to move out of the capillary and the osmotic pressure which tends to cause uh, the water to move in the capillary. 
So the net forces influence the fluid movement. So dapat palaging balance to. Kasi kapag nagkaroon ng imbalance ng blood pressure at osmotic pressure, kunwari nag-increase yung uh, osmotic pressure natin, magkakaroon ngayon ng accumulation ng fluid dun sa loob ng capillary. Kapag uh, hindi siya na-drain ng lymphatic system natin, dun nagkakaroon ng edema, formation ng edema. So ang cause ng formation ng edema is increased in hydrostatic pressure or the blood pressure and decreased in osmotic pressure. At the capillary end, the blood pressure is relatively low dito because blood has been diverted from the arterial to many capillaries. Osmotic pressure is relatively high naman. Bakit? Kasi the solute concentration is still high because food has been pushed out of the tissues to the arterial end. At the arterial end naman, blood is in high pressure because it just came from the heart. Kaling lang siya sa heart, kaya mataas yung pressure. So yung blood pressure is higher than the osmotic pressure. Fluid is forced out of the blood, leaving solutes behind. Naiiwan yung solutes, which increases the solute concentration of the blood as the fluid moves out. Yan. Kasi, di ba pa ganyan yung movement ng uh, blood flow. So, transcapillary flow, meron tayong tinatawag na transcapillary flow. It is when the blood pressure exceeds the plasma on cotic pressure. Okay, so let's now proceed to the body fluids and kidneys or the urinary system. So, ano ba ang function ng urinary system? So, it is mainly for excretion, elimination, um, homeostatic regulation, production of RBCs, filtration, and acid-base balance. So, yung fluid compartments natin, the total body water is composed of uh, consists of 60% of the total body weight. Yung 60% na to, 20% of it is um, extracellular fluid. And yung 40% intracellular fluid. And mahahati pa yung extracellular fluid natin into plasma, which accounts for 25% of the ECF and 5% of the total body and uh, the interstitial fluid, 75% of the ECF and 15% of the total body weight. So, aside from the ECF and ICF, meron ding tinatawag na transcellular fluid. Ito naman is a small compartment of fluid that includes um, fluid in the synovial, peritoneal, pericardial, and intraocular spaces, as well as the CSF or the cerebrospinal fluid. So yung uh, intracellular fluid, so it accounts uh, two-thirds of the total body water. Yung ECF natin, di ba, we've mentioned, it has plasma. Plasma is the non-cellular part of the blood, and it exchanges substances continuously with the interstitial fluid through the pores of the capillary membranes. Meron din tayong tinatawag na hematocrit. Ang hematocrit naman, it is packed red blood cell volume. So, uh, yung ion composition ng plasma and interstitial fluid ay pareho. Pareho lang yung ion composition nila. So, dito sa plasma, Ang difference lang nila ay yung uh, protein components kung saan mas mataas yung uh, protein component or plasma has higher concentration of proteins. So how does the urinary system maintain homeostasis? By regulating water and electrolyte concentration and maintaining the pH balance. So my question no, na, is it safe or should we drink seawater? Kunwari, stranded ka sa isang island and sobrang uhaw na uhaw ka na. Is it safe to drink the seawater? 
So applying the rule of tonicity, syempre hypertonic yung solution na yun. Since you, uh, we are human, it will cause cranation, di ba? Or our cells shrinkage. Pero hindi yun actually yung uh, cause ng immediate death kapag uminom ka ng seawater. Involved yung urinary system natin doon. Because your body would actually use more water in removing the salt that was originally contained in the seawater. Kaya ang mangyayari, mas mabilis ka lalang mawalan ng water. So, mas magiging dehydrated ka. So, yun nga, sabi ng prof namin, it would be safer na yung ihi mo na lang yung inumin mo kaysa yung sa seawater. Alright, so we'll now proceed to the blood groups. We've mentioned that uh, the ABO blood groups exhibits codominance, diba? Uh, parehong na express yung alleles, hindi na mamask ng dominant allele yung recessive allele. So we have group A, group B, AB, and O. So, tandaan mo lang dito yung antibodies in the plasma. Kapag A, kapag yung antibodies in the plasma, kapag sa blood cell type B, ang antibody na meron sila is anti-B. Siyempre, yun yung wala sa kanila. Kasi ang antigen na meron sila is A. So, antigen, yun yung meron sa kanila. Yun yung naka-attach na dun sa cell nila. Yung wala sa kanila is B. Anti. Diba? Pag anti, wala. So, sa group B, they have antibodies A and uh, B antigen. Sa AB, wala silang antibodies kasi meron sila pareho ng antigen na AB. Pabalik ta rin naman pag O. Kapag O kasi, meron silang antibodies A and B pero wala silang antigen. Kaya sila sinasabing uh, universal donor yung group O. And kasi wala silang antigen, so hindi magkakaroon ng coagulation if ever man na madunig siya sa individual with a group A or group B. And yung AB naman, they are considered to be the uh, universal, universal recipient. So we have different blood pigments. Uh, basta parang may lumabas dun na ganito nun. Hemoglobin, it contains iron and has four heme groups to which four oxy- oxygen atoms can bind. Bright red in oxygenated and dull red in deoxygenated state. Chlorocurion, it contains iron and can bind up to four oxygen. Green in both state. Hemocyanin has two copper ions that combines with one oxygen atom. Colorless when oxygenated and light blue in oxygenated state. I mean colorless in deoxygenated. Hemarithrin contains several atoms, can carry one oxygen molecule. Colorless when deoxygenated and purple when oxygenated. So, balikan natin yung um, agglutination versus coagulation. Agglutination, it is the aggregation of particles to form a single large solid mass. Agglutination came from the Latin word agglutinare, which means to glue, to glue to. So, nag-perform sila, nagkakaroon ng uh, clamping. So, it forms a large solid mass of small particles. Mainly, occurs between antigens and antibodies. So, uh, makikita natin to kapag sa blood typing, yung agglutination. It can be used for blood typing and quantification of virus. Coagulation, on the other hand, is the gelling or clumping of particles. And it forms clump of small particles. And it can be observed in bloods. And it can be used to remove certain chemical contaminants from drinking water and waste water. Coagulation. So ayan, dito, coagulation, blood clotting, blood clotting siya. 
So we also have the humoral uh, immunity. We have B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. B lymphocytes, they have uh, memory cells. So they remember antigen, speed up secondary response. So uh, B lymphocytes, dito galing yung plasma cells. Plasma cells make and release antibodies. The IgG, IgA, IgM, IgD, and IgE, which include antigen phagocytosis. Yung IgG, it is only the immunoglobulin that can pass the placenta. Active immunity and passive, passive immunity. Active immunity, antibodies are produced during an immune response. Passive immunity naman, antibodies produced by uh, one organism are transferred to another organism. So active immunity kapag, kunwari ngayong COVID, ang active immunity ay kapag infected ka ng COVID, COVID-19. Kung ikaw mismo infected ka ng COVID-19, active immunity ang tawag doon. Passive immunity naman kapag yung mga vaccines. Kasi di ba ini-introduce natin yung uh, antibodies passive immunity ang tawag doon. Cell mediated immunity. We have T lymphocytes, cytotoxic T cells destroy cells directly. Helper T cells activate B and T cells and macrophages by secreting lymphokines. And they also have suppressor T cells regulate B and T cells to decrease anti-antigen activity. Yung suppressor uh, or suppressor T cells natin, sila din yung responsible sa apoptosis and necrosis. So, may mnemonic yung friend ko dito sa humoral immunity. Parang pag B lymphocytes, bobo siya pero may humor siya. Parang ganun. So, humoral immunity siya. And cell-mediated naman yung isa, yung tailing facets. So, let's go or let's proceed with the blood clotting. So, ano bang na, uh, nangyayari kapag nagkaroon ng wound? Yung uh, isang tissue. Ganyan. So, ang magka- magkakaroon ngayon ng broken blood vessel. So, magkakaroon ng vasoconstriction. And then, uh, eventually, a uh, deposition ng fibrin mesh. So, paano ba nangyayari yung blood clot process natin? Clotting factors are important in the formation of thrombin from prothrombin. And then, yung thrombin na yun will aid in the formation of the fibrinogen into fibrin. So, magkakaroon ngayon ng deposition ng fibrin. Tapos, yung fibrin na yun, it will form tight mesh across the wounded surface. So, dun na magkakaroon ng hardening or yung tinatawag na blood clot. Okay, so let's proceed to the nervous system. Nervous system... Uh, we have uh, the central nervous system or the peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system includes the brain and spinal cord. Central, ibig sabihin sa center. Peripheral nervous system, we have the uh, somatic and uh, autonomic. So, sila yung mga nasa side at the periphery. So, we have uh, somatic, voluntary movements. They can either be sensory or motor. Kapag autonomic naman, they are self-regulated movements. We have sympathetic or parasympathetic. Sympathetic, it is responsible for fight and flight. It prepares the body for emergency responses and has effects such as the widening of the trachea, the increasing of the heart rate, and the liver stimulation for glucose release. Parasympathetic, on the other hand naman, it is rest and digest. Rest the body and uh, produce calm responses. It has effects such as increasing the stomach contraction to promote digestion, 
the narrowing of pupils of the eyes and the constriction of the trachea. So, ayan, mas elaborated lang uh, dito sa image na to, yung slide kanina. So, what are the parts of neuron? Uh, we have axon sends the message away or uh, it sends a message to another dendrite. Axon A, away. Ganun. Dendrite naman, it receives the message. Dun papunta yung message. Soma, it is the cell body where nucleus is located. So we also have here myelin sheath. Ang importance ng myelin sheath is for faster transport ng action potential. We also have neurotransmitters. These are endogenous chemicals that transmit signals or chemical messengers from a neuron to a target cell across a synapse. So these are the different uh, neurotransmitters. We have acetylcholine. It plays a major role in the peripheral nervous system. It is released by the motor neurons and neurons of the autonomic nervous system, which plays an important role in maintaining cognitive function. Dopamine naman, uh, it is involved in many functions including motor control, reward and reinforcement, and motivation. Serotonin, they are involved in sleep, memory, appetite, mood, and others. Glutamate, it is uh, the primary excitatory transmitter in the central nervous system. Gamma aminobutyric acid or the GABA is the major inhibitory transmitter naman. Noradrenaline or norepinephrine, these are monoamines and they regulate blood pressure, heart rate, and liver function. Histamine, they are involved in regulating various hormones, temperature control, controlling the sleep-wake cycle, and among others. Endorphins, these are neurotransmitters that inhibit uh, the transmission of pain signals and promote feelings of euphoria. And kephalines, these are small peptides that can serve as neurotransmitters in the brain. Okay, so for the digestive process, uh, it starts in the mouth. When the food is chewed, saliva starts digesting carbohydrates. So, dito pa lang sa mouth, dun na sa yung carbohydrate digestion. So, digestive process, may involvement din yung brain natin. So, sinasabi nila na parang iniisip mo pa lang nakakain ka kahit uh, wala pa physically yung food dun sa mouth mo, nag-start na yung production ng saliva just by merely thinking of eating that food. Kaya yun yung tinatawag nila na parang naglalaway na ganun. Next, uh, esophagus. The muscles in the esophagus will push down the food into your stomach through the process uh, called peristalsis. So yung uh, peristalsis, it is the propulsion of the food going to the stomach. So meron tayong tinatawag na law of the gut. So yung propulsive movement na yun, it is termed as the uh, peristalsis. So ang nangyayari, peristalsis can occur in either direction from a stimulated point. But uh, normally, it does out rapidly in the uh, toward the mouth direction while uh, continuing for a considerable distance toward the anus. So uh, it, so, yung peristalsis, pababa siya. Um, rarely yung, uh, yung palabas going to the mouth. So, uh, yung movement palagi ng, ng food natin ay pababa, going to the anus. So, uh, after makarating yung food sa stomach, magkakaroon naman ng mixing movement, which keep the intestinal contents thoroughly mixed at all times. So, ito yung function naman ng uh, stomach natin. Everything is blended with digestive juices. Hydrochloric acid kills bacteria 
enzymes break down proteins. Ngayon, may participation din yung pancreas natin. Yung green, yung green part, yung number five. Many kinds of digestive enzymes are also made here, which uh, contributes to the mixing movements of the food in the stomach. Yung small intestine naman, the food is mixed with bile from your liver and juices from your pancreas to be sent back to your liver for more processing. So dito na nagkakaroon ng uh, protein synthesis, ng lipid synthesis. Oh, I'm sorry, ng uh, protein breakdown and ng lipid digestion, not synthesis, sorry. After uh, sa small intestine, ang movement ng uh, food molecules, oh, I forgot, ang magiging term na pagka yung food molecules, ang term doon ay bolus. So ang movement ng bolus sa small intestine natin, first is mixing contraction or segmentation, and second, propulsive movement or peristaltic waves. And then pupunta na siya sa large intestine, indigestible food and water are processed, stored, and dispersed. And the solid waste passes from the rectum in order to leave your body. Doon na magkakaroon ng solid waste. Uh, yung solid waste, yun na yung magiging exit yung anus natin. Alright, so uh, let's uh, proceed to the endocrine system. So for endocrine system, we actually have here the pituitary gland. Yung pituitary gland, it is divided into anterior and posterior. Yung anterior pituitary gland, it consists of the growth hormone, the thyroid stimulating hormone, the adrenocorticotropic hormone, the follicle stimulating hormone, uh, the luteinizing hormone, prolactin, oxytocin. Oh, sorry, uh, hanggang prolactin lang siya. Kasi yung oxytocin and vasopressin, they are produced in the posterior. Ang mnemonic ko dito ay PAVO. Posterior, it has oxidosin and vasopressin. So the endocrine hormones are released by glands or uh, specialized cells into the circulating blood and influence the function of target cells and another location in the body. Pag sinabing uh, paracrine, they are secreted by cells into the extracellular fluid and affect neighboring target cell of a different type. Autocrine naman if it affects the function of the same cells that produced them. Ayan, we have different types of hormones or I mean classes, specifically the proteins and polypeptides, uh, the steroids and the amines. Yung steroids, it includes the adrenal cortex hormone, the cortisol, aldosterone, the the testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. For the amines, we have the thyroxine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine. And the rest, they are polypeptides and proteins. So these polypeptides and proteins are stored in secretory vesicles until they are needed. So uh, they are synthesized in the rough and the plasmic protein kasi nga, protein sila, di ba? And they usually are synthesized first as larger proteins that are not biologically active. So, ibig sabihin, pre-hormone muna sila. And then, they will be cleaved to form a smaller hor- pro-hormones in the endoplasmic reticulum. So, ano ba yung nag-initiate or stimulus para magkaroon ng secretion ng mga hormones nito? So, the secretion of these hormones is greatly affected by the increase of cytosolic calcium concentration caused by depolarization of material. Stimulation of endocrine cell surface receptors causes an increase in CAMP and subsequently activation of the protein kinase. Yung protein kinase na yun, yun yung mag-stimulate ng secretion ng hormones natin. So, uh, the four stages of menstrual cycle. We have here the follicular, 
the FSH process growth of a follicle. Ovulation, the uh, luteinizing hormone causes follicle to release egg. The luteal phase, it is where the corpus luteum forms. Itong uh, corpus luteum na to, it comes from the ruptured follicle that is repaired and turned yellowish and it secretes progesterone. Ang progesterone kasi, it inhibits uh, the follicle stimulating hormone, thus preparing for pregnancy. Pero kapag dito sa number 3 na phase, do nagkaroon ng corpus luteum, pero kapag hindi nagkaroon ng fertilization, kapag hindi nangyari yung fertilization, yung corpus luteum na yun, yun yung uh, multi-disintegrate siya, and then magkakaroon ng endometrial lining, shedding, which causes the menstruation. Just some definition of terms. We have infundibulum. These are funnel shaped distal end of each uterine tube or the fallopian tube. Graphian follicle, these are mature ovarian follicle. Seminiferous tubule, it is the site of spermatogenesis. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe on this channel and like this video if this has helped you. Thank you.